Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss, and today is our second consecutive video of three about death. We call it the Summer Bummer series. But don't worry, today we're going to talk about how to avoid death. Next week, uh, I'm not going to tell you yet. I hope the suspense doesn't kill you. <laughs> So you may remember a few weeks ago in our show about unusual measurements, we discussed the micromort, a unit of risk representing a one in one million chance of dying. The term micromort was coined in 1968 by Stanford professor Ron Howard, no, not that Ron Howard, yet, that Ron Howard, who despite being born 78 years ago has not yet died, indicating that he knows a thing or two about survival. So today we're going to learn which ill-advised activities are the most ill-advised, but just as a preface, none of this is a recommendation. I am only presenting facts. If you want my advice, it's very straightforward. Eat vegetables, exercise 30 minutes a day, and don't do heroin. Alright, first off, I just want to acknowledge that the mere act of being alive is extremely dangerous to one's health. Like, being alive for one year if you're a 59-year-old male has an overall risk of about 7,000 micromorts, which means you have a 7% total chance of dying. One year of being an 85-year-old male, that'll be 200,000 micromorts, or a 20% chance of dying. But let's say that you're the average viewer of mental floss videos. You're 28 years old, about half male, and half female, you're American, and you want to know your five-year overall micromort outlook. Your risk of dying in the next five years is 5,044 micromorts, which means there's a 99.5% chance that you'll live to be 33, so that's good. You're more likely to die from suicide, 626 micromorts, than from homicide, 525 micromorts, both of which are more likely than either cancer, 474 micromorts, or heart attack, 500 micromorts. Your biggest risk by far is accident, 1,465 micromorts. So obey the speed limit, and if you're going to drive a Vespa, which you shouldn't, wear a helmet and do not drive on a bookshelf. Also, if possible, be a woman, because being a female 28-year-old American comes with a one-year chance of dying around 500 micromorts. If you're male, it's 1,338. Also, I recommend moving to Europe. As previously noted, the overall five-year death risk for 28-year-old Americans is around 5,044 micromorts. If you live in the EU, it's a mere 3,819. In summary, European women will live forever, which is great. Great news for Marie Curie. Oh, right. But micromorts aren't just for better understanding when you will likely die and how, they're also useful for understanding the risks of certain modes of conveyance. For example, the following activities will increase your risk of dying by a single micromort. Traveling 6 miles by canoe or motorcycle, or 20 miles by bicycle, or 230 miles by car, or 1,000 miles by commercial jet plane, or 6,000 miles by train. That's right, canoeing is as dangerous per mile as motorcycling, so trains. That must be why all the Europeans are so much less dead than we are. Oh, and also, of course, homicide rates. Our hypothetical 28-year-old has a 10 micromort chance of being murdered in the next 12 months in the U.S. In the European Union, it's 4 micromorts. Micromorts can also be used to calculate cumulative effects, like smoking 1.4 cigarettes is worth a micromort, as is living in New York City's air pollution for two days. Eating 40 tablespoons of peanut butter is a micromort because it contains aflatoxin B, which slightly increases your risk of liver cancer. And eating 1,000 bananas is another micromort, as bananas contain a radioactive isotope of potassium, potassium-40. So all those peanut butter and banana sandwiches I eat are micromort-tastic. But these are all really tiny risks, like ride your bike for 20,000 miles and there's still only a 1 in 1,000 chance you'll die in a bicycle accident. To reach a 1 in 10,000 risk of banana-induced cancer, you'd need to eat two bananas a day every day for 137 years. But some things are a bit riskier, like attempting to summit Alaska's Mount Denali, 3,080 micromorts. Everest, a stunning 10,000 micromorts. On the other hand, landing on the freaking moon, zero micromorts so far. Every hang gliding trip you take is eight micromorts, every skydive is seven, a single pill of ecstasy is one micromort, a day of heroin use is 30. The chance of not waking up from general anesthesia, around five micromorts, the same as going on a scuba diving trip. A day of skiing or horse riding is somewhat safer at 0.5 micromorts each, whereas giving birth is around 170 micromorts if you're American. If you're from Sweden, it's 50. Europe! If you're American, your overall drowning risk is 28 micromorts per year, death by by poison is 11 micromorts per year, death from firearms is 13 micromorts per year, and has been dropping steadily since 1993, although it's nowhere near as low as Europe. You have a 100 micromort risk of death by falling each year, and a 5.7 micromort risk of dying by foreign body entering orifice other than mouth. What is that? Meredith, what even is that? 
Micromorts can also tell us about extremely tiny risks. For instance, that a human is more likely to die from being struck by falling airplane, 0.06 micromorts, than to die in a hurricane, 0.04 micromorts. Although obviously that risk is different if you live in like a hurricane-ish place or directly underneath an airport, which is why I don't do either. So I can definitely say that I will never die from falling airplane. That was poor, not good, also bad. And lastly, are you really more likely to be struck by lightning than you are to be killed by by a shark? Yes. Your annual death by lightning risk is around 0.02 micromorts. Death by shark attack is more than 10 times less likely. The combined risk is about the same as going on a single one mile bike ride. Thanks for watching Mental Floss on YouTube, which is made with the help of all of these nice people. Much of the information in today's video came from the Carnegie Mellon University's terrifying slash wonderful death risk rankings website, which can amuse and or paralyze hypochondriacs for hours on end. There is a link in the video info below. Every week we endeavor to answer one of your mind-blowing questions from comments. This week's comes from Darkastic America, who asks, was Mr. Ed really a zebra? No, Mr. Ed was not a zebra. He was a horse. That is a copyright trap on the notorious myth-busting website Snow Snopes.com. If you say Mr. Ed was a zebra, Snopes knows that you're stealing from them directly or indirectly. Thanks again for watching and BFTBA.